Hi, good evening. Like uh, my colleague Sumit Lakuti had just announced, we're here to talk about this evening our last panel at Voyage Asset Allocation Strategies for Optimizing Gains. And I have with me Vinod Bhatt, Mohit Sharma, as well as Harshil Suvarnakar. Uh, gentlemen, great to have you all. Uh, good evening. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Harshil, if I could start with you, you know, I'm taking a leaf from all that food chat that Timothy Mo mm -hmm. and Nikunj was indulging in. You know, much like that your thali needs to have naan, paneer tikka and whatnot and whatnot. Similarly, our portfolios also need to be as diverse. So I want you to first begin by talking about why asset allocation and diversification is a must for your portfolio, not just for every meal as well. Sure. So, so from a uh, asset, so if if you are investing, you know, across assets, you know, it's important that you diversify your portfolios because you know, as you say, if you put all all eggs in one basket, you know, you you would want to diversify your risk. So you would want to look at look to have a core portfolio, a satellite portfolio, and you know, a strategic portfolio. Basically, you know, to keep your liquidity needs, you also would want to build a core portfolio and uh, as well as a satellite portfolio to enhance the returns on the investment as well as diversify in case of any asset class uh, underperforming, under, underperforming the market. Sure. I For that, we can... also have our uh, asset uh, allocator fund, you know, which mm. can you know, allocate assets, basis the markets and basis the uh, logic that we would have created at our end. Harshan, now, you know, central banks are looking at normalizing policies across the globe and the RBI is going to soon start, maybe tomorrow itself. How is it that one should look at investing in fixed income markets at this juncture and in light of all the developments which are currently taking place? Sure. So, you know, financial markets are, are pretty much efficient and, you know, they tend to they price things pretty much in advance. So, you know, why is, you know, globally central banks have started the process of normalization, uh, this time you're seeing that the developed markets and central banks are going and are expected to go more aggressive than what EMs are. But, you know, uh, over the last one year, we've already seen a lot of rate increases. So let's say you know, in India, you had your 10 year at 6, 6, 10, and it's already, we are at about 690 right now. So, and, and if you look at, you know, how the curve or how yields are placed across the 10 hour, your overnight rate is at 340, which is near the reverse repo rate. And your repo rate is at four, whereas your one-year bonds are trading at five percent, whereas your you would have your five-year bond trading at around six or four-year bond trading at around six ten. So if effectively, what we are trying to say is that you know markets are already pricing in these normalization of rates. So so whilst rates will normalize, there will be intermittent volatility. Uh, basis the one-year point that you see, we are already pricing in four to five rate hikes, which might come from RBI. So the curves are steep. It kind of provides an insurance to investors against the rate hikes, which will happen in the future. So effectively what investors should do right now, especially for, you know, when they are looking at investing is match the horizon of their investments with the, the underlying funds that they would be investing in. So as to take benefit of the insurance premium or the pricing you know, of rate hikes, which we spoke of from RBI. And so that they, you know, don't end up having a negative carry or a drag uh, uh, of cash because the curves are steep. So let's say if you were, had uh, a one-year duration, you can earn a 5% return uh, basis the bond that is uh, trading right now versus if you were to deploy in your overnight markets, you will end up earning 150, 360 base point lower, which would be at about 340. Sure. Right. Um, Mohit, if I could uh, you know, come to you and pick up one instrument here, that's index debt funds. Now, one has seen that there has been a lot of flows into this instrument. Uh, for all the viewers who are joining in right now and for all those who are seeking advice on this, tell us how do index debt funds work and what exactly are they and what, I mean, why is it that one should even look at them as an investment instrument? Yes, so two three questions. So let's start with what an index fund is. So an index fund is an in, is a fund which actually tracks a predetermined benchmark index. Now, a benchmark index could be uh, set by taking into account different factors. It could be a particular maturity or duration, let's say a five-year or 10-year point, 
it could be the rating profile you know a sovereign or a triple a or a double a it could be uh, a particular segment of the industry let's say only government bonds or nbfcs or banks and 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 so on so the in, the benchmark index is made by a combination of one or many of these factors right for example let's say we have a four year sdl index right so that so now the fund managers endeavor would be to buy securities which imitate the return or track the return of that index which is to buy something like a four year sdl if it's a four year sdl index so that is what an index uh, fund is so broadly it is a passive uh, passively managed fund which actually tracks a predetermined uh, index so uh, that is what an index fund is now what is the in advantage of an index fund so first advantage is that it is very easy to understand so for example if you have a 10 year gsec index fund then you know that you know it is going to track the return of a 10 year gsec if you have a, if you take an example from equity side if you have a nifty 50 index fund then it is going to track the the return of nifty 50 so it's very easy to understand second uh, advantage is it is a very low cost uh, uh, vehicle and at a very low cost uh, point, you get a very well diversified portfolio to invest. Third point is, uh, which is uh, you know particularly true in Indian fixed income uh, uh, context, is that the kind of portfolio I mean which are being offered by Aditya Birla and even our counterparts in the industry are all very high quality uh, portfolios. I mean uh, you know GSEC, SDL, and AAAs in various proportions, and nothing beyond that. So, very high quality, you know, portfolios uh, being uh, offered. So, to sum it up, it's a it's a combination of very high quality uh, portfolio, you know, well diversified, very easy to understand at a low cost point, and a very small ticket size. So, this is the advantage of an index fund. And coming on to the point of, you know, it is doing very well. So I would like to say that it is just starting, you know, the initial inertia every product faces, like we have seen globally also, you know, ETF industry took 30 years to reach one trillion mark. And in the next 20 years, it is 20 times, it is 20 trillion now. So we are just in the initial phase, you know, and now we are going to, I mean, most probably grow very fast from here uh, because, you know, uh, it's a very good product and uh, makes sense for everyone. Sure. You know, uh, you know, just talking about few of the products, uh, what are the advantages of, say, a fund of funds? And what is so different about Aditya Birla Sun Life Asset Allocator Fund of Fund? Yeah, Isha, I'd like to start off from your first question. Sure. So why asset allocation is important because that leads yes. into the importance of fund of funds. Like if you see the past, uh, even the past five years, you know, it's been very difficult to predict which asset class would do well. Like, you know, every year, either it has been domestic equity, one year, next year it has been fixed income, third year international equity, fourth year it has been gold and so on, right? So from an investor's portfolio point of view, it's very important to have at least these four asset classes and in addition to real estate in the portfolio uh, because these asset classes are negatively correlated. They have different cycles. So if one asset class doesn't do well, then some other asset class does well. And that's how you get a stable risk-adjusted return. So that's the starting point, right? And that's where fund of funds come in uh, because as a product, for example, the Aditya Birla Sun Life Asset Allocator Fund of Fund provides exposure to four asset classes, domestic equity, international equity, fixed income, and gold, right? And as I explained, in any environment, especially if you see the past two years, the markets have been very volatile. And as uh, Tim also mentioned, even the next one or two years are expected to be very volatile. So in, in these kinds of conditions, the fund of fund can ensure that, you know, the overall portfolio volatility will be lower and hence you can get better risk adjusted returns. Uh, the second aspect to understand is that instead of investors trying to monitor markets, time the markets and get in and out of funds, stocks or asset classes, they can just invest in this one fund of fund and they get exposure to the underlying asset classes and the funds. And the fund of fund portfolio is aligned to our fund house strategy, our outlook. We make the necessary changes in the asset allocation and the underlying funds. And the investors don't need to do any of that. And the third is all the advantages they get. So one is if they make the underlying changes in the portfolio, they need to pay short term or long term capital gains tax. But if those changes happen in the fund of fund, investors don't need to pay any tax as long as they don't redeem the fund units. A dedicated portfolio manager manages this fund of fund, overall volatility is lower, 
and the overall cost also is lower. So that's how I think, in especially looking at how markets have trended over the past two years and what we can expect over the next two years, a fund of funds would be an ideal ideal product for investors to look at. Yeah, that's quite interesting considering how balanced the approach is. You get an exposure via one fund to various asset classes. And of course, the headache is the fund managers to try and figure out which one to increase allocation to. But Mohit, uh, you know, we were talking about index dead funds earlier. Wanted to understand uh, how are the returns and characteristics compared to, say, traditional debt instruments? So uh, the returns in our index fund are uh, well understood by the investors i mean like like i mentioned earlier i mean it, it it actually tracks a particular point in in whatever we select the as the benchmark index so any guy who's sitting outside can very well find out that what the return on that particular you know point is let's say 10 year g set and he can figure out what is you know what his return would be just to take an equity example, because you know everyone understands equity. You know, if a fund is tracking Nifty 50, you know, if it goes up by 10%, you know, your fund should return somewhere close to that that number. You know, similar thing would happen in a 10-year GSEC or any other index that it tracks. So that that is you know one thing wherein if, if it is an actively managed debt portfolio, then you know the fund manager would change the duration or some kind of a composition in terms of you know the, the credit part of it and the YTM will change. So it will be slightly difficult to you know uh, manage the understand for a retail investor to understand what the return would be. But in the index, it is very easily understood just by looking at what the index is doing. Mm -hmm. So that is the return part of it. The other thing is that because in, in index, what happens is uh, uh, you are just tracking index one, you're tracking a benchmark. So the entire endeavor of the fund manager is to, you know, just buy securities, which, uh, you know, kind of meets that mandate. So the resources are saved, like unlike an actively managed fund, you know, you don't have to deploy a lot of resources there, hence the low cost uh, of it. Sure, sure. But Mohit, which fixed schemes you think would be suitable right now in the current global and, you know, domestic environment for investors? Yeah, so 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 if 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 you want to come for index funds, we we advise typically advise you have to come for three year plus kind of a period because you know our index all our index funds are located you know in a four year bucket, five year bucket, and very soon we'll be launching you know the higher uh, uh, you know uh, duration buckets also. So we advise index fund for three year plus kind of uh, investment horizon. But if your investment horizon is slightly on the lower side, let's say for three to six months because of the global uncertainty and also you know uh, the uncertainty regarding what stance rbi may take going forward given you know a lot of things have changed since the last policy uh, you know the geopolitical impact and the corresponding impact on the you know commodity prices and global rates so taking that into account you know again like harshil mentioned the curves are very steep and based on our investment horizon, you should uh, pick a particular point. So if you're in, for example, if your investment horizon is, let's say, three to six months, then you should come for a low duration fund or a floater fund, which runs, are, which currently are running a duration of 0.5 to 0.6 years. And they provide uh, extra yield of around 125 basis points over a liquid fund, you know, which broadly translates into around 15, 18 to 20 basis points per month of roll down. You know, which is a very good, uh, you know, investable opportunity for somebody who is looking for a very short term kind of investment, three to six months. For somebody who is looking to invest in, let's say, a one year kind of a horizon for a one year kind of a horizon, we, we, we are suggesting short term fund category where, again, you know, it is a, a duration of around 0.7 to 0.8 years higher than the low duration category and about 80 to 85 basis points of extra carry which effectively translates into around 10 basis points per month of roll down over and above what we are getting on the low duration part. So, so three to six months low duration and uh, float along one year point, uh, one year to two year is the, the short term funds and three year above three year and above is RR uh, four, five uh, year uh, index uh, products. So that is what uh, we would suggest. Sure. Harshil, I guess a lot will depend on what the central bank chooses to do tomorrow. Uh, what are you expecting from the policy? Given that the Fed has already moved, you think the Reserve Bank of India as well, uh, the governor is going to, or rather the MPC is going to bite the bullet? 
Yeah, so so actually, you know, tomorrow's policy is very important for the fixed income markets, and and maybe you know it also guides the equity markets in terms of what the RBI is thinking. So it will help all of us gauge RBI's reaction function to uh, a lot of changes in the macro environment that has happened in the last uh, quarter. So let's say the last policy was in February. From February to April, we have seen. Three to four key changes that have happened in the market. One is oil prices. Oil prices at the time of last policy, crude was at about eighty dollars. Now it's uh, hovering uh, slightly about hundred dollars, which is about higher by twenty five thirty percent. And commodities which have been exported by Russia, Ukraine because of the crisis, you are seeing that all of these commodities have spiked up, and you know these can cause inflation to spiral. uh and we've already seen you know uh, some of the price rises which have been passed to the consumers by by way of petrol diesel or the retail price increases in energy uh, over here also and and across the globe secondly of, of course uh, because you know you you have a lot of uh, fertilizers which are been exported by russia and in you know, some by ukraine and some commodities like sunflower oil etc you know which used to get exported from there so global food prices also have risen but you know because india is primarily uh, export oriented on the uh, food side you know you've not seen such a large impact but you know uh, that gives a threat to us because you know you can have indirect impact on our food prices because of fertilizer price increases third uh, on growth uh, we've seen that you know omicron wave is behind us uh, covid uh, and other high frequency indicators of growth are indicating a robust growth uh, progress in india but of course you know a key difference that you know rbi keeps pointing out is that you know uh, for india if you were to draw a trend line uh, like we are uh, think seeing about you know how tim spoke in the last session you know we are still below the trend line of growth in india whereas you know, if you look at dms especially us you are seeing that you know their growth is above the trend line so so of course growth looks good but you know we still below the trend line so we have to see as to a how much rbi increases their inflation forecast and you know apart from this revision in inflation forecast it, we we have to see what is the degree of change in rbi's commentary you know while you know rbi might move on uh, rates but what is important is to what is the degree of hawkishness that rbi shows towards these changes which have happened and what they are thinking about normalizing rates which will drive all markets uh, uh, and especially on the last piece that you know the government has announced the about 59% of its overall this year's borrowing in the first half you know which is a very heavy number and as per our calculations also you know there is a demand supply mismatch you know because of the large borrowing program so we will need rbi support in in some form so we have to see if what rbi does for the support of the government borrowing or else we can see you know especially belly of the curve which you say about the 7 10 year space can increase uh, you know if rbi doesn't provide support over there so these are the th key considerations and things to look out for in tomorrow's policy and the expectations that market will have sure and i guess that's when we know this going to juggle around the fund of funds and maneuver allocations accordingly but we know the fund would to you know put the spotlight on you just wanted to understand given how um, you know march 2020 began with when you saw i mean not just indian investors but uh, the world rushed to safe haven assets such as gold then came the mighty equity rise and we've seen that bull market a raging one of that besides a few volatile bouts here and there play out for the last two years now uh, how has aditya birla sun life asset allocator delivered uh, performance so far and how is it that it's managed to be so consistent right yeah that's a good question so if we look at the uh, performance in you know, the last one year return has been 15% the last three year kager return has been 15% last five year kager return also has been around 13% and we have been consistently in the first or second quartile for for the short medium and long time frames uh, the main reason for this is the uh, streamlined process that we have set up internally uh, and which has really helped us over the past two three years when we have seen so much market volatility so the way we work is you know every week every monday morning we have our fund manager meetings where you know i uh, i get inputs from all the fund managers in terms of what they are thinking about the market how their funds are positioned and so on right so that gives me some uh, information to stay ahead of the curve in terms of maneuvering the portfolio and every fortnight we have our analyst meeting where uh, the analysts talk about their sectors 
what can be expected from the sectoral thematic funds and so on. So that's an additional information advantage. And lastly, every month, uh, we have a meeting with Mahesh Patil, who's our CIO, uh, Kaustub Gupta, who's our head of fixed income, and Bhupesh Pamitha, who's our economist. Uh, so we discuss global macro, like, you know, what's the Fed going to do, how it can impact markets, what's happening in China, for example, or what the RBI can do, uh, what are the expected earnings, growth rates, what returns we can expect from different asset classes. And so that help, keeps us on our toes and uh, we kind of are uh, quite regular in monitoring the portfolio and rebalancing as required. So for example, if you go back to like, you know, March, 2020, just before the COVID crisis, uh, our equity allocation in the portfolio was about 45%. And if you remember after the crisis hit, we saw almost a 45% drop in equity markets. Uh, and we have a model that we run uh, that looks at various valuation metrics and recommends what is the allocation for different asset classes. And that model suggested that we increase the equity allocation 100%. And then we did, had our internal meetings and discussions and we raised equity to 80%. That's kind of the upper end of the band. Right? And since then the markets have rallied, so that helped the portfolio. And as the markets have rallied, the model suggested reducing the equity allocation. So over time, we have reduced it and today we are at about 42%. Right? Same way, gold also, like you know, earlier we had 5%, we increased it to 15%. And as gold rallied, we have reduced it to around 10%, right? So the basically the point is that, you know, we follow a process that takes in both quantitative inputs from the model, as well as qualitative inputs from our fund managers and CIOs. We regularly monitor the portfolio and do the rebalancing as required. And that is, that is what has led to a performance consistency. Great. That's uh, such an insightful, uh, you know, uh, insight that you just gave us uh, into how the fund of funds has actually maneuvered its moves all from pre-COVID up until now. But great to speak with all of you. Thank you so much, Vinod, Mohit, as well as Harshil. Uh, you gave us a great peek into how one should be looking at allocating strategies for optimizing gains at a time like this, uh, given that a lot has changed from the start of COVID in the last two years to now. But good speaking with you guys. So with, with that, it's back to you in the studio. <laughs>